when you open the column valve and the beam starts to hit the sample, you also see this microscope confirmed focus box. The computer doesn't know how tall the sample we put in the chamber is. And so it doesn't know how much clearance we have at this time. But once we focused on the surface of the sample, we'll be taking a measurement of the distance from the pole piece to the sample itself. And then we can calibrate Z, the stage height position, with the working distance. Working distance being the distance from the pole pieces to the sample surface where the beam is in focus. If this message box is in my way, I can remove it to another monitor or move it to a different position. But I'm not going to click OK until this sample is in focus at 2000x magnification or greater. You can see the beam raster scanning uh, across the surface of the sample. The scan rate can be changed under the scan tab here on the upper left. In the top menu you see I have five different choices ranging from TV which is the fastest scan rate down to slow scan 2 which is the slowest scan rate at 33.2 milliseconds. If you watch the change in the screen as I go from slow scan 1 to TV you'll notice that the resolution gets a lot worse. TV mode is good because it updates the screen quickly but it has a very low signal to noise ratio and so we see a lot more static in this image. Slower scan rates have a lower refresh rate but they have a lot less noise in the picture. So as long as we're moving the sample around and we want a live update I'll leave the scan rate on TV. When we want to do fine focusing we'll look at a slower scan rate that removes all of this noise from the picture. So I want to confirm that the microscope is in focus at 2000x so that I can tell the microscope how much clearance we have in the Z coordinate. Right now it reads Z not calibrated and it's at a default value of 17.5 millimeters. This measurement is not a true measurement at all. When I get the sample in focus, this working distance will be a measurement in millimeters of the distance to the sample, the correct distance to the sample. The gold on carbon sample is located up here on the positive Y axis, so I'm actually going to move to the center of that sample and that actually gives us something to see. Focus this by right clicking the mouse and just moving left to right until I get the sharpest image. Now the sample is much more in focus than it was and you see the working distance reads 10.7 millimeters but the magnification is only 97x. I need to get it in focus at 2000 or greater. So I'm going to zoom in by hitting the plus button on the number pad. That, that doubles my magnification each time I push it. 777 1553. I'm going to stop and focus because it's clearly blurry right now. And you can see that these defects in the surface of my standard here are, are more visible now that I've adjusted the focus. So I'll magnify one more time. I'm now at 3100 over 2000. I get the best focus I can and now the working distance reads 13.5 millimeters. This is an accurate measurement of how far the sample is from the pole pieces. So I'm going to calibrate that height of the stage by clicking OK in this box. And you can see that it transfers the working distance into the Z coordinate over here. Once I know how far it is to the sample and I've calibrated the stage height, I can reduce that height because the imaging is always going to be better at a lower working distance uh, because there's less atmosphere for the beam to travel through. Ultimately, I want to do my imaging at about 5 millimeters working distance. As a safety measure, I'm going to reduce this to 10 millimeters first, recalibrate the stage height, and then move to 5 millimeters. So to adjust the stage height, I click on the drop-down menu in the Z field, and I select the final clearance that I want from the detector. Right now we're going from 13.4 to 10 millimeters. And then to initiate the move, I click on this Go To button. I move the mouse to the upper left corner and watch on the CCD camera as the sample approaches the detector. If the sample gets too close to the detector, there's a cancel box that will open in the upper left corner and I want to be ready to click on cancel so that the sample doesn't actually impact the detector. If you're careful about following the protocol and the sample is in focus before you move it, uh, you shouldn't need to cancel the vertical movement. But in case uh, there's a problem, you accidentally focus on the wrong part of the sample, for example, uh, you want to be ready to stop that vertical movement 
before any damage is done to the machine. So my working distance now is 10 millimeters and the resolution of the stage motor is on the order of micron so it doesn't go to exactly the position that I want it to go to and after I've told it to move to 10 millimeters I need to refocus and actually tell how high it went because it'll be slightly off from 10. I'm going to focus again to get the best possible focus. I can see that I'm off by less than a tenth of a millimeter in this case but I want to recalibrate the height of the stage. To get the dialog box back I click on Z forward working distance and again I want to confirm that the sample is in focus at more than 2000 X by clicking OK and you see that it's updated the Z height with 10.049 millimeters so I was off in my initial movement by 0.049 millimeters which isn't much under normal circumstances but uh, it makes quite a difference in the focal length when we're actually trying to look at a sample so I'm at 10.049 I'm going to drop this stage clearance now down to 5 and I will initiate that movement and I'm ready to cancel in case the cancel box opens. We're at the final working distance so again I'll focus and I can't see very clearly uh, because the beam conditions haven't been optimized yet. Even though the sample's in focus if the beam isn't perfectly round uh, we'll get a distorted image and that hurts our resolution quite a bit. When the beam is optimized we should be able to resolve uh, down to about 10 nanometers uh, 10, 10 nanometer size structures on the surface of the sample. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to move to a position that has better contrast. So you see on the edge of this group of nanoparticles there's a blank space that's uh, black carbon and I'm just going to zoom in to this area where I've got both the bright and the dark in the same field of view. And I'm going to try and focus the boundary between the two as best I can. You can also see that some of the defects, blemishes on the sample become visible when I'm in the right focal plane. The next thing I want to do I'm in focus at 6,000. I'm at my final working distance of 5 millimeters. I want to zoom in to 10,000 or more. And we'll do the beam optimization. 